Watch Ultra is Apple's most durable smartwatch ever. With more battery than ever before and LTE connectivity now standard, the Apple Watch has become even less dependent on an iPhone. So that got me wondering, could I go an entire day using the Apple Watch Ultra as my only device? Well, I decided to find out. In this video, I'm going to take you through my entire day in first person view while giving you real time activity and battery updates as they happen. Will the Apple Watch Ultra survive? Let's find out. My day started at 9am with a sleep alarm that I set the night before. I did normal human things before changing for my morning jog. I hooked up my AirPods before leaving and was able to walk out with just my Apple Watch thanks to having a smart door lock that doesn't require keys. By the time I left, I had sent 7 messages and my battery was still at 100%. I didn't do any crazy adventures like those you saw in Apple's promo video, but I did go for a casual jog around the lake using the workout app. I made sure to close my exercise ring before heading back home. I arrived back with 92% battery and unlocked my door using my Apple Watch since my door lock is HomeKit enabled. To be honest though, this is my only HomeKit enabled device and everything else runs on Google Home. I decided to swap out my band to hop in the shower. I didn't want the main band getting soaked since that material would take longer to dry. I used water lock after my shower to eject the water from the speaker and microphone, but I did have issues with dictation for a while. Hello. It was still a busy morning though, with 41 additional messages being sent and received. After getting dressed, I had to print a QR code for UPS since the email on my watch would be way too small for them to scan. Signal inside my house has always been pretty rough, so I was running into issues with receiving and sending messages at times as well. I finally headed out of the house with 68% battery after having sent 6 more messages. I'm glad Tesla uses Google Maps for their map data since I still don't fully trust Apple Maps. Ironically enough, while driving I tried using Siri to call a local business and Apple Maps had an outdated phone number which didn't work. Tesla Maps to the rescue. Or not. My car decided to have connection issues at this moment as well. Luckily, I came prepared with my iPad, which I used to locate the correct phone number using Google Maps. I dropped off my items at UPS and headed back to my car to get some work done on my iPad. After I was done, I used Siri to set a reminder and I was on my way to the store. For the entire day so far, I had used 47% of my battery, having done a 30 minute workout with music, sent and received a total of 59 messages, made 2 Siri requests and 1 successful phone call. I arrived at Target to pick something up really quick and was able to complete my purchase using Apple Pay. It was now 2pm and I was just under 50% of my battery. I decided to give Apple Maps one more shot and ask for directions to the nearest Panda Express. I can't lie, the maps on this massive display really do look great. And well, there goes my workout. I headed back to my car and spent about 45 minutes getting a lot of work done on my iPad. I headed to the closest Chase ATM nearby, and although I rarely use my Chase debit card, it's nice that you can access your account with a tap of your wrist. Shortly after, I arrived to get a haircut and my activity rings were looking pretty nice for the day. With the Ultra's massive display, viewing pictures you receive on the watch is better than ever, although you're not able to zoom in on it. About 30 minutes later, I walked out with a fresh cut and a battery in the red zone. My day was nowhere near over, but I had a plan. Side note, right at golden hour I was really able to appreciate just how bright the screen gets on the Apple Watch Ultra. With a peak brightness of 2000 nits, I was never in a condition where I couldn't see the screen clearly. It's not something you'll take advantage of all the time, but when you do need it, it sure doesn't let you down. Just as I pulled into my house, I got the low battery notification, which was perfect timing for one thing, time to disconnect for a bit. Even with a much bigger battery, it's safe to say the Ultra won't last you an entire day as a standalone device. However, at some point in your day, you'll probably want to disconnect for a bit, so I took advantage of this time to charge my watch while I did a few things around the house. I made myself a quick shake and along with a bunch of junk mail, I did receive some goodies I had ordered. Spoiler alert, the Tesla is going to be looking real nice real soon. A quick vacuum on the inside of my car and voila, after about an hour of killing time, I was ready to wash my car now. 
My watch did charge slower than normal since it was connected to LTE even while on the charger, but I managed to get juiced up to 37%. I was hoping this would be enough for the remainder of my day. So it was now time for a much needed wash on my car, as you can see, so I got to work. Washing your car should be an option in the workout app because it sure did help me close out all my rings for the day. And after the final touches on the car, I wrapped up by the time the sun had went down. I did continue experiencing signal strength issues inside my house, so I had to go to certain parts of the house to send messages. I hopped into the shower for one final quick bath, and after changing into something comfortable, I grabbed my laptop and began working on this video. By 9.52pm, I got my low battery notification again, and at 10.23, I decided to call it a night. After getting ready for bed, I finally wrapped up my day with exactly 5% battery remaining. In total for the day, I sent and received 179 messages, made 3 phone calls, 5 Apple Pay transactions, 3 Siri requests, had a 30 minute workout with music, and about 5 minutes of GPS directions. So is the Apple Watch Ultra ready to replace your iPhone? In some areas, the Ultra truly delivers. The battery survived a brutal day of LTE constantly being connected. Despite the bigger, brighter display, I was able to keep the always-on display turned on the entire time, unlike in my previous video where I had to turn it off by noon. But many limitations still remain. Notifications still can't be truly interacted with, and many essential apps lack true Apple Watch support. In conclusion, the Apple Watch Ultra is at its best when working coherently with a paired iPhone. More than ever, this Apple Watch works like magic on its own for almost all the essentials, but in the few areas that it does lack, you'll be glad you had your iPhone on you. Thank you for watching. Until next time.